Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm here with the Man vs. Machine program brought to you by PL Vulcan Fire Training Concepts. This station involves uh, getting a hand out of a meat grinder. People ask us, is this common, Is this happen? And in your response area you have supermarkets, you have uh, pork stores, and you even have private residences that have meat grinders in them. I'm going to present Jimmy Adams here who's going to lead you through removing the hand from the meat grinder. Thanks, Tommy. All right, folks, uh, we approached this type of an incident. Um, we're gonna come up. The patient's obviously gonna be stuck with their arm here in the meat grinder. Uh, what I like to tell students to do, if they haven't passed out yet, um, you know, we're gonna come up and maybe get an arm under each one of their shoulders, get your knee underneath the rear end. We're gonna kind of support them in case they pass out, they don't fall down. That's kind of a short-term deal. We'll get a stool, a bucket, a backboard, uh, across something. We'll get them something to get them comfortable. It all depends on what the height we are here at the table. Uh, but we want to make sure that patient's controlled. If they fall and bust their chin on the table after we get there, um, you know, we're not doing our job properly. Then we got to start thinking about what's powering this machine. For training purposes, we use this hand-operated grinder. Not very practical. Somebody would get jammed up in this machine. However, um, it could have a small motor and a belt right here that powers it. We can either unplug it. We're going to cut the serrated belt. If you go to a local butcher shop or something like that, we're going to unplug it from the wall. It could have a dedicated breaker, but we have to make sure that we lock out, tag out that machine. Um, once we start doing that, we're going to talk to the patient. How are they feeling? Um, we're going to try to talk them through this very traumatic event. We're also going to start, um, if the paramedics are on the scene, we might take, take about, or think about pain management. If this is a large machine and they're all the way up into their upper arm, we might be thinking tourniquet. Maybe put a tourniquet on there if they don't, uh, if they don't need it then um, of course, you know, it's there. We don't have to look for it if that happens. Now we're gonna start talking about how we're actually gonna remove them from the machine. Um, we're gonna bring a crew in here in a minute, but we'll, call, we'll talk about this assembly. This uh, collar's gonna come off of the machine and we got a couple of instruments we're gonna remove behind there. We gain nothing by cutting them, so we're just going to remove them. Then we're gonna take this marker that we need here and we're gonna make uh, two horizontal lines, two vertical lines. Those are gonna be our cuts that are gonna allow us to disassemble the machine. Um, after we get those made, we're going to start uh, uh, thinking about how we can hurt this person as we're doing this removal. As we're doing that, this blade spins really quick on this right angle grinder. So one of the things we're going to do is we take these hacksaw blades and we just take the teeth off of them on a bench grinder. We're going to put those in whenever we're going to make our cuts. We're going to put them in vertical and we'll cut in line with that, in line with the line we've drawn on the machine. We're also, once we get this disassembled, when we make our horizontal cuts, we'll do that. The joy of having this is it's flexible. So I can come back here. It's gonna be very busy here, right? So this allows me to bend this out of the way. If the grinder kicks up for safety, I'm out of the way. Same thing when I front load it. I'm gonna pull it back here. If the machine kicks out to the front, I'm not in the danger zone. The other way that we can injure this individual is this is gonna cut by friction. It's not very sharp, but that friction is gonna create heat. So we're gonna take, uh, we can have water bottles that we took a screwdriver and we just poked a little hole in, gives us some water or we can use what we like to use, we're gonna use for this as a garden sprayer. It gives us a, an endless supply of water. If you go to a local butcher shop for a bigger machine, what we wanna tell you to do is they normally have a garden hose that's gonna be somewhere close they use to, to, to uh, clean the machine on a regular basis for health codes. Bring that off, take the nozzle off, just crack it. We don't need 180 gallons a minute. We're just looking to absorb that heat that we're creating. Once we have our cuts made, this is a cast machine. It's very soft. We're gonna use that to our advantage. So there's four places I like to tell students you have to cut all the way through the machine. Right here where my thumbs are and right up here in this threaded portion. The rest of it is gonna be a deep score. Then we're gonna take a screwdriver where we've gotten all the way through. We're gonna put a little pressure on there and you'll actually hear the machine crack in those locations. Um, once those guys get this thing all, they're gonna make two cuts for you here in a second. We're gonna go over here to a machine that's already cut and we'll talk about victim removal. So we're gonna bring in Phil Higgins and Chris Black real quick, and uh, they're gonna do some cuts on this machine for us. So you'll see they're making our lines. What we like to tell everybody is just kind of like, if you look at it from the front of the top, about half. Um, the top is more of an oval. You want to be half of that. When you're doing a horizontal cut, just kind of look at it, visualize um, half of the diameter of, of the, uh, the cylinder that is the discharge. So 
So you can see they're spraying the water. We don't want to spray it right on the electrical machine. Just where the blade makes contact. The vertical cut's more challenging because the way the machine is beveled. So you'll cut at the top and then you gotta kinda work your way into the machine. All right, so they're front loading their shim now for their horizontal cut. The entire time, we'd like to have a paramedic or someone from the uh, the transport team that's going to be taking care of the patient, monitoring through them throughout. Um, if this is going to be prolonged, might want to think about a medical helicopter. It all kind of depends on what your uh, EMS system provides you. So they've, they've made those two cuts. Um, we would come here with our screwdriver, get in here, put a little pressure, you hear the crack, just as we promised. Um, so that is the way we would, of course, repeat this. There's a crack on this side. So two good cuts. Um, so that's what we would do. We would do this on your side. We're now gonna switch to the machine over here that um, is already cut up for us. We're gonna talk about patient removal and what we actually do. So we're here, we've made all four cuts, two vertical, two horizontal. Well, you saw the machine crack for the one we did for the demonstration and now we're ready to take this machine apart. One of the things I like to talk about at this point, say little Johnny goes down in the basement and sees what dad does with uh, you know, his deer or something he processes at home, gets his hand jammed up in this. Uh, children are gonna be very hard in the field to work with. Know your EMS system, is it better to take them to a children's hospital? Um, you know, do, are we gonna have to sedate the child? Uh, j just know what the EMS system offers and have a plan for that before this happens. So now that we've got our four cuts made, we wanna get the patient's attention somewhere else. Maybe put a sheet, a blanket, a backboard, uh, get their attention somewhere else. They know their hands hurt, we just don't want them to see it if they haven't passed out by now, now's not the time. We're gonna remove this top piece that we've cut, okay? We're gonna take control of the hand. All we need from EMS is a padded board split, right? So we get the padded board split right here. We're gonna push the auger through from the back. We take the hand, put on a padded board splint. We're gonna package it just like this and off we go to the trauma center. Why do we do that? So if you think about how this is gonna play out with all the, all the, uh, the tissue wrapped around this, um, we don't wanna tear nerve endings, things like that that may end up in a stump for this person. So we're gonna send the whole thing to the hand surgeon at the trauma center. We're gonna let them take it apart in the operating room and hopefully they'll be able to give this person some dexterity because we need hands in our day-to-day -day life. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, what I like to tell all of our students, you may not ever come across someone's hand stuck in a meat grinder. This teaches you to be able to take a tool like a right angle grinder and make precision cuts in the field. We really don't think of that tool as being something we make precision cuts with. So if you practice with this, do these kind of drills in your fire department, you'll be better with this if, you're, if you have something with uh, someone's hand stuck in a meat grinder or some other tough rescue out there in the field. So again, my name is Jimmy Adams of PL Vulcan Training Concepts and thanks for watching another episode of Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. <laughs>